Hey, what's going on? It's Brandon Styles, and today we're talking about Google Firebase. So what is Google Firebase? When I got into more complicated apps, apps that needed authentication, apps that needed a database, or to store other users, pictures, videos, whatever, I started to use Firebase. Firebase is an assortment of products from Google that make backend management in your app a lot easier. Meaning, no longer do you have to write all the functions and logic to authenticate someone, right, when they sign in with their email or password. No longer do you actually have to build out this complex database and put stuff in it and update it and keep service spun up, no more of that. Google Firebase, abstracts all that away. So all you have to do is call a few little functions or methods and it sends it off to Firebase, does its thing and returns back a completed function for you. Now, all these products put together is called backend as a service, B-A-A-S. And all that means is that Google created a bunch of tools for you to use in apps, web apps, websites, whatever, to make backend stuff a lot easier. Let's jump into an illustration and I'll show you how it works. Google Firebase is just a collection of tools that Google has created that help you quickly implement a backend. And you can use those tools. You can rent them for really, really cheap. Most of the time you can rent them for free. It basically makes it easier to implement all the harder backend stuff for an app. So for example, let's say you build out an app and it starts to get a little bit more complex and you want users to be able to store personal information. Think like Amazon, Google, and things like that. Well, if you wanted to do that, you'll probably need a few different functionalities. You'll need help logging them in and logging them out. You don't want anyone to just be able to change someone else's profile pic, that would really suck. You probably also want to authenticate the person. So is this person who they say they are? Like if I just sat down at a library and tried to access Johnny Q's Facebook page, it would need to know that I was Johnny Q before it let me in. And usually you do this again with a login, logout functionality. You might also need database management. Now a database is essentially just, think of it like an Excel sheet. And in every single row, you've got a different user. So maybe in this user, you've got John, then you've got Jim, and then you've got Steve, and whoever else, all right? And so up here you've got your keys, so this would be name. And then in these rows you would have all the information about this person that you would need. So maybe in this one is their email address, maybe in this one is their username. All right, here might be a hashed password, and you can just keep adding these and you can add more later on. Maybe you have new functionalities. But anyways, you'll probably need a database to store information about people. You'll also probably need storage. Now storage is a little bit different than a database in that you can't upload a picture and put it in a database. Just like Excel, you can't really squeeze a picture in here. You can squeeze a link to a picture, but not a picture. So storage is where users can upload their images, videos, documents, just kind of anything that needs to be stored on a server to make your app work. Again, with more complex apps, you probably also need hosting, right? You need a little shelf on the internet that your app or your website can sit. And then you also probably are gonna have to have some backend functionality. So maybe you need to create a user or delete a user, or you need to change their user profile picture or something. You're probably gonna need some backend functionality. Now this all used to be really hard. Like you used to have to write out functions and logic for this component and then a bunch of functions and logic and safety for this one, right? Can you imagine having to like custom code your own hash algorithm to get make sure people are authenticated? That's how privacy breaches happen. Then you had to code this and this and this and this, and it just added up to a bunch of pages. Well, Firebase abstracts all of this away. So instead of having to write, let's say, a full authentication library out in your app, you can kind of just call an authenticate method. Let's get rid of this. And then you just need to send in an email, a password, and then maybe a username. It goes to the Google server, it checks yes or no, and then if the person is certified, it sends them back to the app and it says you're good to go, and then it'll send them to like a welcome screen or their profile page or something like that. So normally, if you had to write out an authentication thing, not only would you need to be on top of all the common practices in authenticating someone as a user who they say they are, but it would probably be thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of code, and you just have to make sure all this is right, and you'd have to look at libraries and all this kind of stuff. Whereas with the authentication methods on Firebase, you kind of just have to write three lines, and then you can get someone authenticated 
or you can get them rejected if the credentials are not right. Let's take a little bit deeper dive into what each of these do. So here's Google Firebase, it's right here, and let's check out the pricing real quick. This is really, really cheap to use. In fact, it's probably gonna be free. So they have a start for free pay as you go scheme, and you can see what all you get with the Spark plan. So not only does this have authentication, Firestore, which is your database, cloud functionality, analytics, hosting, etc., but it's also super generous, right? All the testing and analytics you get for free and then authenticating, you can actually authenticate 10,000 people a month. So if your app only has 2,000 people, you're probably not paying for much. But then after that, it's one cent per verification. Same here with Firestore, so your database. So you can have up to a gigabyte of data. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but again, you're really just talking about an Excel spreadsheet type of deal. So you can fit a lot of information into that. And then you can also get 20,000 writes per day. So a very generous free tier. So you're probably not going to get much in the way of, of hitting this Blaze plan right here. Now this calculates pricing uh, as you go. Now if you're not sure how much you're gonna need, maybe you're kind of lingering right on that threshold, you can actually come down here and they have a calculator. So maybe you know you need to store 50 gigs and then you know that you have a 200 gigabyte database and then you know that you're gonna need a lot of storage, so you crank that up to a terabyte, et cetera, et cetera. Even then, with all those users, you're only at about $300 a month. So it lets you scale up your apps vertically, and what that just means is that if you've got 100 users today, and maybe your app gets on the news, and all of a sudden you have 10,000 people signing up, it will automatically grow. You don't have to go in there and your website crashes because so many people are trying to sign up. That's what vertical scaling is. Let's take a look at the products. So if you're using Firebase, you could just click into Firebase right here. And then you can do a couple of things. So I've got a few projects here, but I'm just going to add a project and you can call it whatever you wanna call it. Let's call this video tutorial app. Click continue. It asks you if you wanna add Google Analytics to it. You can choose yes or no, they recommend it. Now with this, you can get A-B testing, user segmentation. You can even predict user behavior, which is really cool. And you can see about what this is right here. So it kind of tries to A-B your app for you using predictive behavior, and it can kind of give you feedback on maybe what your quarterly numbers will look like or something like that. Finally, you choose a Google Analytics account. I'm gonna choose mine real quick. And then Firebase starts to spin up your project and we'll take a look at what it looks like when it gets done. I'll be right back. All right, that just took about 30 seconds, it's done. Now we can click into the project and see what it's doing. So over here you can see all those functionalities we've talked about. So here's your authentication, your database, storage, hosting, functions, and your ML kit, your machine learning kit. You can also click into here if you wanna set up other stuff, if you wanna set up your crash analytics, so why is your app continuing to crash? Is there a spot in the app where things keep crashing or, or breaking? It's performance, how fast is it loading? Are users getting a really good experience? So on and so forth. And you can even get into predictions, A-B testing. It's really cool. You can even do cloud messaging. So if you needed to send notifications and kind of prod users to keep going, you can do that. So all that stuff that normally takes a lot of lines of code to do, Google makes it easy. For example, let's take a look at authentication. So if you had an app and you wanted to authenticate someone, instead of writing all that code, you can just click set a sign up method. And then here's all the providers. So if you wanted to do an email and password, you could enable that. And then you know those buttons that say sign in with Google? It's right here. So you can click sign in with Google. And you can literally add to your heart's intent as many of these as you want. You can go down here and add in domains, so maybe your project's at funproject.com. You could add funproject.com right here so it knows which domains are authorized to make a request to Firebase or not. It even gives you email templates, so when someone signs up, you know those, hey, verify your emails. You can get that here, and you can actually just custom code these however you would like to. And what it says, the email say for password resets, email address changes, all those kind of things. In your database, you've got a couple of options. So let's say before I launch my app, obviously we want to create a database. If someone signs up for an account, that information, the email and password need to go somewhere. So here it is. I usually start in test mode if I'm just testing an app. Good deal. Here's our database. So let's say I wanted to start, think of this again as sort of like an Excel spreadsheet. This is a NoSQL, so that's not exactly right, but it's, it's basically a spreadsheet for your users. So you can call these people users, 
That's your collection ID. A collection is just a document. And then inside of this document, which is user, you can have some different fields. So you could have an email. This is going to be a string. You could have a username. You can have their birth date or something like that. And then you click save. And over here, this creates your data. So anytime someone signs up as a user, it's going to automatically give them this birthday field, email, username. Let's say later on you're like, hey, we want to add their horoscope in there too. All you have to do is come over here. And then that's added right there. I hope I spelled that right. I didn't double check that. So this is how you can set up your database without having to write all the code yourself. The rest of it's also fairly self-explanatory. We're not going into how to set all these up today. That would be a super long video. I'm just giving you an overview. So here's your storage. So if you wanted to set up storage, you could do that right here. Again, this is just allotting hard drive space somewhere out in the universe somewhere. So it's creating a bucket. A bucket is essentially your little hard drive. So a bucket could be 25 gigs of space, 100 gigs of space, a terabyte of space, so on and so forth. But this is setting up your app's own little personal bucket. It's really cute. And that way, if a user uploaded a profile image, but programmatically, let's say they changed it on your web app, those images would go right here. You've also got hosting. So if you wanted to host your app somewhere, you could do this. It makes for a quick deployment of your apps and things like that. And it uses a CDN, Content Delivery Network. So you might have a little server here. You might have one here. This is the world. Here, here. And it stores it on all of these so your app gets delivered really fast. Functions are really cool because these, essentially you're going serverless here. You've probably heard that term going serverless. You can run all your backend code without having to do anything to a server. You don't have to touch it. So here's a Google server right here. And with functions, you build some of your own custom functions. Let's say you write a function to change user profile or change user password or send tweet to Tom Cruise or something like that. You can write these functions here and then let's say this person is using an iPhone, this is another person using a computer, here's another user maybe in Delaware or somewhere random. They can all tap into this server and call these functions. So if this guy right here changes his profile image, it'll just call this function on Google server and it will change the, for the person. You don't have to manage any of this. Google does it all itself. Finally, here's the coolest new one, which is the ML kit. This lets you do machine learning in your apps. So you can upload your custom models. Maybe you have a model for predicting when someone will die. That would be probably a really profitable model for you. You could do that in Firebase with ML kit. So someone would essentially send a prediction off to Google. Google would calculate that and then return it back to them. And you don't have to go through all of that stuff. So essentially what Firebase does, let's go back to the project here. It abstracts away all of the hard stuff when you're creating an app, kind of all the boring stuff, right? You want to be able to use AI to draw a picture. You don't want to spend hours writing code for authenticating someone. That's boring. Now, the thing about this, it's a little bit of a steep learning curve, okay? So you really need to read the documents. Now, if you're creating an iOS app or an Android app, or a web app, let's click web just for the sake of this, like if you're doing a React app or something. So you could call this my first app. You would register it. And then you need to add the Firebase SDK, Software Development Kit. These kits, think of it as like a car parts kit. You could get a Tesla Model 3 car kit and it comes with all the pieces and you just put it together based on what you want. It's the same way with an SDK. It's just a kit of all this kind of stuff that you can put together to fit what you need. When you add the SDK, this is how you add it into your app. So you can either call it from a CDN or you can use like an NPM module and download it directly into your app. Here is going to be the configuration file for it. And so it's set up. It's ready to put inside any app you want. You can put this in a React app, Python, Node, anything you want to do. You just need to add that configuration object. Now to learn how to do all this stuff, like I said, it's a little bit of a grind. The best thing to do is to open up the docs, select what you want to do. So again, maybe we're starting in the web. And then you just need to go through this. So this is first how to add Firebase to, in this case, it's your JavaScript project. So once you set that up, maybe you want to authenticate someone. So you need to come down to the authentication docs and you would just need to read through all of this stuff. But they make it a little easy on you by implementing these different situations you might need. So let's say if you're developing something for iOS, and you want to figure out how to do a Google sign in on Swift or something like that. This is basically copy and paste code that tells you how to do that. 
And maybe if you're working with Swift, you can do that. Or if you're like, ah, I'm rather coding in Objective-C, you can switch it to that too. And you can kind of drag and drop this. They also have different docs that show you examples. So it still takes a little while, but nowhere near as long as it would take. For example, let's look at this web one where it shows you how to do a Google sign-in. So this shows you how to implement a total Google sign-in using just this basic amount of code right here. Of course, you've got to write some stuff in and fill it in, but it's way easier. Google takes it all away from you. So that's an introduction to Firebase. You can also look at some samples over here. Here's, for example, a quick start for authentication if you wanted to look at the web version of that. You can also look at the different libraries to see what languages are supported. So they've got Android, C++, JavaScript, and then they've got some admin SDKs. Admin SDKs go a little bit more in depth, and that's for if you want your users to be able to manage some stuff on their own. Maybe they want to change their own profile picture, things like that. You essentially can set different permissions for yourself, who is the developer, and different users, they can have access to certain parts of the app. But anyways, you've got Go, Java, Node, Python, all that kind of stuff over here. It's even got a command line interface so you can use it in a terminal. So it's really cool. I've been using Firebase a lot to get apps off the ground quickly. And again, it takes away all the boring stuff, authentication, setting up a database, setting up hosting, blah, 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 makes it quick so that you can get onto like the sexy stuff of like building an AI or making a prediction and things like that. Firebase also has a really fairly comprehensive YouTube channel and of course a really comprehensive documentation so you can get set up and going. Unfortunately, that's out of the scope of this video. This is just an introduction to Firebase, but you can check it out. So if you're developing apps or websites that need this kind of stuff and you need to be able to scale it and you don't want to pay a billion dollars, Firebase is a great way to do it. I'm Brandon Styles. Thanks for checking this out. Let me know if you found some other cool uses of Firebase. What else can you do with this thing? Hopefully that was informative. Subscribe to the channel if that was helpful, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks a lot.